There's a few people that have had a profound effect on the history of the X-Men. Of course, Stanley and Jack Kirby, Chris Claremont, Len Wein, John Hickman, but one woman deserves credit for a whole dimension of X-Lore that wouldn't exist if not for her. Louise Simonson might be the reason that you even like the X-Men in the first place, and you don't even realize it. Hi, I'm Dan Umthen, and this is the Doomcast. Louise Simonson was born Mary Louise Alexander in Georgia, and attended Georgia State College before moving to New York with her first spouse. Their daughter Juliana was born before she and Louise divorced, around the time that Louise posed for the very first Swamp Thing appearance for Bernie Wrightson. Yes, that's Wheezy on that cover. She began a career writing and editing comics around the same time that she met Walter Simonson. And in the early 80s, she started editing the main Uncanny X-Men title, and then moved on to the other X titles. What you've got to understand if you don't already is that an editor is responsible for not just the look and the spelling of a comic, but also for continuity, where the characters are, what they're doing, where they've been, the person whose job it is to remember the entirety of Marvel history, that's the editor. So by 1986, after writing and creating a few new titles of her own at Marvel, she began writing X-Factor. It was there that she introduced Apocalypse, and then Cable. Well, the adult non-baby Cable. I think Claremont did the baby. Uh, but imagine how wild this makes the X-Universe. A 5,000-year-old Egyptian mutant who is still alive 2,000 years from now, who is fighting Cyclops and Jean Grey's messiah mutant child, who is now a 50-year-old grizzled combat mutant super soldier. It takes the history a lot farther than the 20 years that the X-Men had existed at that point. The ideas expanded and enhanced the horizons and future and the past of the X-Men, beyond what they had already been. And she's writing a title that ties in but cooperates with Chris Claremont's legendary run, but exists wholly separately. This was one of the first times a major comic label started introducing line-wide events in Mutant Massacre, the first time that a single editor had coordinated such an undertaking line-wide. Now, this redefined what it meant to be an editor, not just a historian anymore, but almost like a general managing multiple fronts at the same time. She went on to co-write and co-coordinate The Death of Superman with Dan Jurgens and others, no less an incredible feat, and to continue to write and often collaborate with her husband Walt, a legend in his own right. What Louise Simonson accomplished in breaking the glass ceiling wasn't merely impressive, it shattered that ceiling, going well beyond the creative expectation that her male editors and writers had at that point, and it set a new benchmark by which comics writing and editing are measured. Thanks everybody for watching, hope you appreciate it, take care, and have a great week.